Right, so the magic within, this is something that I started looking at uh, a number of years ago. It started, to, started from my interest in, in crop circles, which is where some of the people might uh, know me best from. I uh, put a number of videos on uh, YouTube about uh, back crop circles. And, um, it got me thinking about, you know, what's really going on with all of that. And um, that's a very big area in itself. Some people think I'm a crop circle researcher full time, I'm not at all. Um, I just look at that as an interest, as a hobby. But this is what I actually do. Uh, I run a holistic health practice in Solihull. And again, I've been looking further into these kind of things throughout my practice. I do things like reflexology, Reiki and hypnotherapy. Particularly the things like Reiki and hypnotherapy, you'll find that this, what I'm talking about today is very relevant. Because the, the ability that we have as individuals is absolutely incredible. And some of the, the speakers that have been on before may have touched on those themes as well. And it's certainly something very real and very possible. And this is what we're going to be exploring today. So, I've got a store at the back of the room with some of my uh, information on as well, if anybody wants to talk further about any of these topics later on. But, uh, I want to ask this question then. Has there been a high level conspiracy to keep the truth about how powerful we, we really are. Well, I think it's probably one of the biggest conspiracies of all time. You might not be a conspiracy theorist, but when you start to look at what humans are actually capable of and what we're actually doing currently, what the, the capacity that we're actually working at, you realise that we're, we're well below what we're actually capable of. And, um, and this, this theme goes right back into ancient times, and I'm going to be linking in with that as well. So, this question started to be asked by people like this chap. This is going back to 1957, when Professor Hans Einstein, who works for um, the Department of, uh, so the uh, Psychology Department in the University of London, in 1957, he claimed that there was a major conspiracy involving over 30 universities from around the world and hundreds of respected scientists to keep the truth about the true potential of human consciousness from the public. So a lot of scientists around that time were starting to look into human consciousness and what they're actually capable of. And they were discovering things that were then suppressed from the, the mainstream public. And, and this has been happening, this, this has been going back well to, into the 50s here, and has continued to the present day. And you'll see this theme cropping up all over the place. This is a quote going some way back as well. There is a force in the universe which, if we permit it, will, allow, <coughs> will flow through us and produce magical results. That was the time Mahatma Gandhi. And more recently, every human being is equally powerful in their ability to shape the planet. The power was taken away from us, and the evolution we are experiencing now is to recover that power. And that was Bruce Lipton, author of Biology of Belief, quite uh, up to date now. And this is a current thing that is starting to get more prominence now, that we have this ability, we have potential that we are not realising fully. And if we start to realise our potential fully, I believe, you know, we can do almost anything. And I'll touch on some of those things as we go through. Can you hear me all right at the back, by the way? All right. Now, I did say I wouldn't, wouldn't talk about crop circles this time. <laughs> um, because I've found that what I've been doing is the same questions, the same things keep repeating themselves and people don't seem to be learning from it. 
I've, I've had a slightly different take on this whole subject for some time now, and I've had a lot of abuse for it, because it doesn't fit in with the general picture of what people want to believe. Um, now this is a crop circle that appeared this year. It's probably the, the, the most outstanding crop circle event for a number of years. Um, have many of you seen this before? Can you see it all right? It's an absolutely astounding crop circle. I can't remember the dimensions, but it is absolutely huge. And one of the most intricate designs that's appeared for many years. Now this has caused a lot of debate and controversy in the crop circle subject about how this got here. And it's very intriguing. But from my own research and from the research of other people who I know and trust, they've uncovered that, uh, that this was made by people. And um, I'm not going to say who, so I don't even know who, but I have a good idea. Um, but the controversy rages on about this because all the, the conventional researchers into crop circles will be telling you that this is, it is not known who made this and this appeared overnight and it was unknown to the, to the farmers uh, how it got there. Which is not the case. This appeared over at least three, three nights. Um, there may be, I've even heard suggestions that it was stretched over a period of two weeks and it was actually a commissioned job for an American glassware company called Mothership. And this, is, this incorporates their logo. So it was a deliberately commissioned piece of art. But it was deliberately set there to create mystery. And this is a lot how the crop circle subject does work. There's a lot of mystery, a lot of things that are, are not what they appear to be. And I've started talking about crop circles and saying very controversial things like people make these and getting a lot, a lot of um, hate from people when I say that. Now, just to clarify, I'm not someone who is an out and out sceptic about extraterrestrial or anything like that. Uh, I get constantly berated for this kind of thing. I'm someone who seeks the truth, and I've looked into this subject at a very deep level. I've, I know many circle makers. Uh, I've been out even uh, on, on the nights when, and seen a team make a crop circle. I've been on night watches, all sorts of things involved with, with the subject. And the conclusion I came to very quickly when I started getting very deep into it is that uh, all of the complex circles that you'll see are made by people. Now, people will be very shocked, some people will be shocked to hear that, and very disappointed to hear that. Um, and I do find it a bit odd, in some ways, that people are disappointed by that. Because, when you look at something like that, and you think, that was made by people, that makes me think, wow, I didn't know people could, were capable of that. And this is the question that people keep saying to them. How could people do that? They could not do that. It's impossible. Is it? We've been talking here about human potential and how powerful we are as people, yet we're very quick to dismiss something like that as being possible to be made by people. And I find that very odd about the human race, that we're very quick to say, people can't do that, we are very limited species, we are limited in our potential. Extraterrestrials could do that, because they are better than us. That's a very strange way of looking at the human race. We are no worse than any extraterrestrial race. Uh, if anything, uh, at least equal, maybe better. From what I know. I'm, I'm not dismissing extraterrestrials to exist. They may have incredible powers and potential as well. But the human race is where it's at. We have this ability, we have this potential. So, there is this want to believe aspect 
So this is what so many people who follow crop circles want to believe. They want to believe this something else. They have not usually done the research at a deep, deep level to find out the truth. They want to believe this, and they will, and they will dismiss anything that stands in the way of that belief. And this is how the subject has continued for so long. But what I found is that there is so much going on around the subject that is out of the ordinary. And this is what intrigued me. There's a lot of paranormal stuff goes on around the subject, and particularly around the circle makers themselves. So they're in, involved in this, not because they want to fool people, but because they're experiencing things, and they're gaining uh, inspirations from somewhere else. They're getting this um, ability to do this from somewhere else. Okay, so there is a higher consciousness at play here, and this is what they're interacting with. So this want to believe thing is limiting. So we always want to believe that a higher intelligence has done this, and it's not always the case. We need to start looking at ourselves. So, this is what we should be doing, in my opinion. This is what I believe. Okay. I believe in the power of humans, and you should too. This is really where, if we're going to evolve as a race, you've got to start believing in yourself. Stop looking outside of yourself for the answers. Stop looking for extraterrestrials to solve every problem, for angels, for whatever else you want to see as a higher being. See yourself as equal to that, if not more. So unleash the magic within yourself. We've always had this ability. This is why I concluded with about the subject of crop circles, just to conclude on that, to reconnecting with the true magic that lies within it. The crop circles have encouraged us to question the mystery of life itself, how the power of consciousness affects us all, to reevaluate our relationship with nature, spirit, and each other. And they have prompted us to ask the question, is it possible? And this is what people are always asking to me. And only by asking these questions do we push back the boundaries and evolve. Or is it remembering what we were before? And I would say that is the case. We're not necessarily evolving, we, we have devolved. And we now have to remember what we were. And this is a quote I like that sums up um, a lot of how people view the crop circle subject when they say it can't be done. So those that say it cannot be done should not interrupt those already doing it. <laughs> Chinese problem. And I do know personally many crop circle makers who are responsible for some of the most incredible pieces of land art that people will say that's not possible for humans to make. They do it. Whether they have extra abilities, extra insights, I don't actually know, but they do it. Okay? They have that ability. And on the face of it, when you start looking at really what's possible, we can do a lot more than make a crop circle. We can do that. Okay? There are many people that will say they're not made by humans as well. But, I believe going back, way back in time, we were connected. We were fully connected with spirit, we were fully connected with the earth. And we were utilising the true powers that we have. And when we start to connect all these things, our spiritual connections, our connections with the earth itself, we start to be brilliant once again. And these people, um, I, hate, you know, I, I don't want to call them necessarily ancient Egyptians because we don't necessarily know that that's who it was that made them. But I have no doubt whatsoever that these were made by people. And uh, we have that ability to do that again. So, all of the memory that we have from the ancient times is stored within us. 
So if we have that ability to make pyramids, these incredible structures, and when you look at some of the things to do with the, the Great Pyramid, it is probably the most astounding building ever built on Earth. We did that, and the memory of how we did that is all stored within our subconscious or unconscious. Um, Rupert Sheldrake talks about morphic residents, morphic fields, as in, in terms of includes the orga organizing fields of animal and human behavior, of social and cultural systems, of mental activity, um, can all be regarded as morphic fields which contain an inherent memory. So we all have this within us, it's, it's all there. Uh, it's just a matter of tapping into it. So this, this is just to highlight some of the things about the, the, the Great Pyramid of Giza and how it utilizes Earth energy. Because I see the three, three things, human, Earth, spirit, as the key components of this, these magic ingredients that we have. When we start to connect all these things together, we start to do, do amazing things. And this, to me, also suggests another reason why this would not have been made by extraterrestrials, because it, it is a homage to Earth. Everything about the Great Pyramid is about Earth and humanity. Um, there are some, some dimensions there, I won't go through it all, but it is all to do with uh, very precise alignment to, to the Earth. It's right in the centre of the Earth's landmass, that wasn't an accident. Uh, perfectly orientated to the four points of the compass, precisely fits, sits onto the 30th parallel, and uh, it actually, the pyramid resonates to the frequency of 8.1 hertz, the keynote of Mother Earth. Uh, again, that's not an accident. Those people were in tune with the Earth and with spirit, and you'll see what they utilised it for was to connect with spirit even more. And it wasn't the two, there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that this was never built as a two, no evidence to suggest it was. Um, the Book of the Dead implied that the chamber of the open tomb, which is now known as the King's Chamber, was the doorway between the material world and the spirit world. So it was a, a link point with different dimensions. And I think this is really where we should be heading now, starting to rediscover this kind of magic, this kind of uh, connection that we have with not just uh, spirit, not just with the earth, but with multiple dimensions, and they, they were there thousands of years ago doing this. So the pyramid shape was said to elevate the initiate's consciousness to a heightened state and culminated in a meeting with God and actually took them to uh, out-of-body experiences. So this is something that we don't hear about a lot to do with the pyramids, but um, it is fairly well documented even though Egyptologists won't tell you that because as far as they're concerned it's a two. <laughs> so how, how can we bring out that potential within ourselves then? Uh, one of the first things that we will need to do is to reconnect with spirit. Connecting with spirits, connecting with the earth, meditating, and one or two people have already mentioned about the, the powers of meditation, and um, certainly I think that is a, a very simple place to start. So we we can do this on a daily basis, and, and, and you can practice it, you can get better at it. But meditating strengthens the link with your inner spirit and the divine. It is a pathway that leads from falsehood to truth, from stress to peace, from limitation to potential. Anything from a few minutes a day to several hours a day can transform your worldly experience. So, this is something I would encourage people to do. We always say, well, we're, not, we're too busy. Come on, come on, we're far too busy to fit that into our working day. But uh, as Gandhi said to someone, when they said to, and he said, I meditate for an hour a day, they said, how do you manage to fit that into your busy schedule, an hour a day? What if you have a really busy day? He said, well, if I have a really busy day, I'll do two hours. <laughs> so, 
So that's about prioritising. So if you prioritise it, your day will be better. Your life will be better. But we tend, we, instead we prioritise all the mundane things uh, and being a slave to, to, to you know, the, the, the nine to five, things like that. Where we should be starting to disconnect from those kind of things without, you know, obviously just quitting on the spot, but we need to start thinking about where our priorities are. And this is um, a quite a well-known uh, experiment that was undertaken by Dr. William Tiller. He had a group of experienced meditators who would project their thoughts and intention to a, a distant target. And um, he showed that intention and human consciousness can change our reality. So with focus and intention, experienced meditators collectively were able to alter the pH levels in water over vast dis distances. And this is well documented. So intention, particularly when it's collective, is very, very powerful. Emotion, mind and spirit can significantly influence a target in physical reality. That was uh, Dr. William Tiller's conclusions there. And there's many documented cases of the amazing powers that some people can have when they really deep, delve deep into meditation. Superhuman powers. Uh, these are some of the things in the report that uh, came out in a science document recently. When they analysed experienced meditators, particularly I think uh, Buddhist monks, they found that uh, they were giving off massively higher gamma waves uh, when they analysed that, uh, the brain waves. Uh, Qigong masters would emit infrasonic waves 100 to 1,000 times above normal levels. And monks could even emit heat where others would freeze to death. And then they did an experiment with these monks, put out, uh, wearing virtually nothing at all, would be out in sub-zero temperatures, and would meditate to raise their body temperature. They would even put ice cold soaking wet sheets round their shoulders and they would dry the sheets just with their thoughts. Now I'm not saying you could all go home and try that <laughs> tonight, sit out in your back gardens, uh, because you haven't got the experience of that, most people wouldn't. But this is the potential that we have to do that, but we have to priori prioritise doing these kind of things. So when we do, we make that a lifestyle, suddenly our abilities will increase. These are people that will do this, you know, up to 10, 15 hours a day. That is a, almost their life. Now, most people, that would be pretty impractical. But we can start introducing that on a small scale. And I truly believe when more, the more people that do this, the more our whole level of consciousness as a race will rise. But if we keep being distracted by all of what's going on on you know, the news, on the television, all the, the nonsense that we're, we're fed, then our minds are distracted. And basically that's where it comes back to the conspiracy, because is that deliberate? Dumbing down our minds so that we're distracted, taken away, our attentions are taken away from where it should be. And again, Massive suppression of natural health. This is going on on a huge scale. I mean, the pharmaceutical industry, as many of you will know, are probably the most powerful um, industry in the world and have a huge influence over the medical profession all over the world. So, pharmaceuticals, obviously, are limiting our ability to function. They're limiting our connection with nature. There's poisons in the food, in the water. Okay? People keep telling me that Birmingham tap water is wonderful because it comes from the Welsh mountains, which is true, but unfortunately it doesn't come straight from the Welsh mountains into the tap. It goes through a, 
a filter filtration system which then takes out a lot of the goodness and puts in a lot of crap, poison in its place, fluoride, all those kind of things, terrible things to, to be consuming. And they also will affect our ability to reach our potential. Wi-Fi is everywhere. Again, affects our vibrational level. So, although it's convenient, it actually isn't doing us any good in terms of how it affects us and our ability to function. I can guarantee you the, uh, the ancient Egyptian pyramid builders wouldn't have had Wi-Fi. Uh, or smartphones. Uh, so all those kind of things, again, it's a distraction. It's something that makes us focus on our the, the, the sort of mon more mundane aspects of our, our life really. And we, the criminalization of, of natural herbs, like cannabis, hemp, ayahuasca, the things that are proven to be, have healing ability. And you know, things like ayahuasca can actually help us to connect with other, other realms, other conscious states. And even natural healing is becoming criminalised. And there's been a spate of mysterious deaths of holistic doctors in America who are, are looking into uh, natural cures for cancer and various other things. Uh, but enemies of the pharmaceutical industry, basically, when they do that. Uh, so natural pra health practitioners, holistic health practitioners like myself and a number of other people here, are not welcome in, by the pharmaceutical industry or by the, the health industry generally, even though what we do is far better for the body. We should be connecting much more with natural health than pharmaceuticals. And I truly believe that there is a cure, there is something that will help just about every, every condition in nature rather than relying on um, pharmaceuticals. It's all too easy just to prescribe pharmaceuticals to take away the symptoms. But pharmaceuticals will only, will only help the symptoms. They won't resolve the actual problem. So the microcosm reflects the macro... The, the macrocosm reflects the microcosm. I don't know the So when the energy is being held at a cellular level, the microcosm matches the world outside. Our body, the macrocosm, there is nothing we, can, we cannot do. Everything is possible for us when we live in harmony with the macrocosm. This is the true meaning of human potential. That's from Barbara Wren, Cellular Awakening. So really this is just focusing on the fact that at the cellular level, if our bodies are healthy, undamaged, we are going to function so much better. Um, so what fuel we put into our bodies, how we treat our bodies, is so important. And that picture just shows the difference between healthy and damaged cells. Uh, the damaged cells were after um, a fast food uh, meal had been consumed, and, and of course that all is damaging. Okay, so the quality of your life is determined by the health of your cells. So let's reconnect with natural health. As I mentioned, pharmaceutical drugs just treat the symptoms of them. Things like reflexology, Reiki, massage, acupuncture, all the other holistic therapies, they will treat everything holistically. The whole body. The practice of healing arts, such as Reiki, Qigong, Tai Chi, all those kind of things, increase your own body voltage, and increase your ability to connect with the higher consciousness. Healers, or we're not allowed to say healers, practitioners of natural health <laughs> will also, can also increase the body voltage of others. So do utilize natural health. When, you, when you've got something you know, wrong with your body, don't just go to the GP, you'll just get a, a prescription of drugs. You know, there was a program actually on BBC the other night, and, uh, a guy sat in on uh, one day in a, in a doctor's surgery, GP surgery, 
And out of 40 patients, 39 were given drug prescriptions. Most of them antibiotics. Uh, most of them weren't actually needed. But this is what's happening. They will not look at any alternatives. So you need to be aware of what the alternatives are. Don't rely on, on your doctors to know because they are not God. They are not uh, all knowing about health. They rarely know about how to um, create good health. All they know is about how to treat bad health through drugs. And this is the other area that I'm very interested in, which is um, the subconscious mind. The power of the subconscious. I do hypnotherapy and I've seen this kind of thing firsthand. This is why I, I studied hypnotherapy, because I was very interested to see how we could influence our own mind through hypnotherapy. And it, it does shortcut a lot of the difficulties. When people think, well I can't do this, I can't do that for whatever reason, hypnotherapy, you suddenly bypass that, the critical factor, which is the conscious mind, and you start to get to the real depth of the person, which is in the subconscious or the unconscious. And that's where everything is stored. And you have a massive potential within you, buried under the surface. And the, the, the picture there perfectly illustrates really how it is. The conscious mind is just the interface with the world, and we think that's us. But underneath it, there are vast resources at our disposal. So, you can tap into those very easily. And I'm always amazed how easy it is to change somebody's life when they start to go through hypnotherapy. Okay? doesn't necessarily work like magic with everybody, but some people can go through miraculous changes in a very short space of time. And this is a good example of one. Now this is my, well, the lady in green is actually my wife. <laughs> but uh, this is to do with her sister, who's the lady next to her. Um, a few years ago, she was told, uh, well she, she, she was diagnosed with a hole in the heart. Um, because she was getting short of breath and uh, she went to see a doctor and they said, you've got a hole in the heart. And they said, well, she said, what can I do about it? And they said, nothing. Uh, it's, you know, it, it won't go away. And she said, well, can I still have a baby? And they said, no. Definitely not. It's unsafe. Uh, so forget that. And that was the end of the story. And she was obviously upset about that. I spoke to her, and I was just starting to study the subconscious mind at the time. And I uh, was reading a book about all this, and I said to her, why don't you just do some visualizations, meditations, when you go to bed at night, which is apparently the best time to do the visualizations in terms of manifesting, before sleep kicks in. Imagine the whole disappearing. Just do that. See what happens. And she did that every night for about 15, 20 minutes. She went to bed and just imagined little teams of workers, miniature figures of people going into her heart, sewing it up, mending the hole in the heart. Uh, some people would laugh at that and say, that's ridiculous. What's that going to do? Well, she went back for a three month checkup. After three months, they said, they came out and did the, did the checks, did the tests. They said, um, we don't understand this, uh, but the hole's gone. And they were just baffled by it. And they said, this never happens. And they kept doing further tests just to confirm that that was the case. They said, no, there's no doubt about it, it's gone in three months. And they could not explain it. She didn't tell them about the visualizations, but I have absolutely no doubt that's what healed her. So that is how powerful your mind is. This is what you can do. Every one of you can do that. So if any of you have got any illnesses, anything wrong, including serious terminal illnesses, they can be helped. They can, they can go away.
if your mind is in the right frame of mind. If you accept a doctor's diagnosis when they say you've got six months to live, when they diagnose a cancer or something, if you accept that, guarantee that that's what will happen. If you refuse to accept that, if you use your own mind, maybe get a bit of assistance with it in these kind of ways, you can do anything. And you can heal yourself. Okay? So, this is really what I'm aiming to do in the workshop that I'm uh, preparing, the workshop I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, now, this is where every, a lot of people are. Are you in the victim trance? Okay, which is the easy option. It gets us out of all responsibility. Just say, it's not my fault. Okay, nothing I can do about it. Okay? But you can, you can do something. So are you a victim of the world around you? Or are you seeing the world through tunnel vision? Are you seeing evidence of what really, uh, what we really already think and believe? And this is how the world tends to work. Okay, we constantly look for things to confirm our beliefs. And if it doesn't fit with it, we just dismiss it. Okay, but we need to open our minds far more than we have been and see the potential that you have as an individual. So the most common way that uh, people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. But you do. Loads of it. Okay, so wherever you find yourself right now, reprogram your conscious mind to expect the life you want. That is possible. Anything is possible. And this is what uh, I will be exploring on the workshop on the 8th of October. Um, it's going to be utilising hypnotherapy and meditation uh, with a, a small group of people. If there is enough interest, we'll run these regularly. Uh, this is the first one I'll be running. Um, it's already half full. Uh, but uh, there's still places for one or two more people if they want to join that. I think it will be a fantastic experience for those people that are coming on board. And not only to explore things from your own perspective, but also to share with others. I think that's a good thing as well. Um, have that group support and, and really support each other. Because collectively, I do believe that these things are, are much, much stronger. So. If you're interested in exploring the powers of your own mind and reaching your own potential, do have a word with me afterwards. I'm in the far corner over there. And uh, I'll be happy to talk to you. And um, if you want to put your name down, I'll be glad to, to do that. Okay. And I think I've actually finished in time. <laughs> so, any questions for a couple of minutes? Anybody's got any questions? Absolutely, you could, could well be, but the mind is responsible for so much. Yeah. Stress, anxiety, tension causes so many illnesses. Uh, so yes, I, I, would, I, I would agree with that. Um, this is where the, uh, the medical profession has a real dilemma in, in terms of understanding this uh, and, and contradicts itself. Because it will say, yes, stress causes illness. We recognise that. What is stress? Can you see it? Can you touch it? It's an energy. Uh, it's an emotion. So it's how you react to that stress. Okay. So they're recognising that, but they won't recognise that energy can heal it. So things like Reiki, reflexology, acupuncture are using energy to heal. Okay. They're reversing the process, taking away the imbalance and putting in something positive. Hypnotherapy does the same thing. So, yes, I would agree there. Did somebody else have a question?
Yep, that's what I've heard, yeah, about what, half a day. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, that, that's a very good point. The doctors don't know very much about health. They don't know about nutrition, um, how to prevent illness. This is really, if you think about it, this is what they should be doing. They should be there to make sure that everybody is well. Make sure you eat the right foods and take the right supplements or whatever. But take, taking pharmaceuticals goes against all of that. Uh, so it is very contradictory. And it is, uh, well, the pharmaceutical industries have a massive input into the content of what doctors will learn on their, uh, on their program of study. And uh, it's obviously all geared towards managing illness rather than preventing illness. Okay. All right. I think I'll stop there and I'll bang on time. Thank you very much.